Welcome back to Fish on Luke, something a little bit different today. We're not actually fishing in the video, but we are gonna discuss the most important things to remember when using circle hooks for catfishing or any fish for that matter. So I actually got in touch with some of the best anglers in the country and we made a uh, like a top 10 list of important things to remember when using circle hooks. Not This is one not just from me, it's from some of the best anglers in the country in my opinion. But hopefully you stay, stick around until the end of this video and if you did enjoy it or found it helpful, please hit that subscribe button. The first thing we're gonna talk about when using circle hooks is make sure that you have a sharp hook. Make sure the point is sharp. That is a very important aspect when you're using circle hooks. The next thing we're gonna talk about when using circle hooks is make sure you have the right rod for the job. This rod here is a Catch the Fever Hellcat Medium, my favorite circle hook rod for giant channel cats and sturgeon. Moderate to soft action tip, something where the hook can do the job and it's not super stiff. You're not gonna pull out the circle hook when you're using a rod like this with a nice soft tip. That is a very important thing, moderate to soft tip, the right rod for the right job. The next thing we're gonna talk about is using a snell for your circle hook on monofilament or fluorocarbon leader. Um, it, it will increase your hookup ratio and it makes the hook set perfectly in the water. And when you use a snell, on a circle hook, it will increase your hookup ratios. This is a no knot snell, a super simple snell. I don't even tie a knot on the end of my tag line. Um, you can actually loosen this knot if you pull it down, but it will not come out. This knot does not come out. And uh, this is a very common, there's an advanced snell and there's a no knot snell. I use the no knot snell, but if you use a snell when using circle hooks with monofilament, you will increase your hookup ratio. The next thing we are gonna talk about is using the right size hook for the size of fish you are catching. And this is mostly important on a circle hook, they have this gap here. You want that gap to be able to get around the jawbone of the fish. And that is important when you're circle hooking because if this hook can't get around the jawbone inside of the mouth or in the corner of the mouth, you're not gonna have very good hookup ratios. So make sure you're using the right size hook for the size of fish you are targeting. The next thing we're gonna talk about, this is very important, very, very important. Do not set the hook when you're using circle hooks. If the hook's already buried and you wanna give it a little raise up, that's fine. But do not run, don't run your clicker, tight line your bait and let the rod do the job do not pick up the rod and rip the hook out of the fish's mouth because those hooks, these circle hooks are not designed to be setting. Sometimes you're gonna get lighter bites and you can reel down on them to bury that hook. Sometimes they're gonna bury the hook all by themselves. Sometimes you gotta reel down and get that hook buried in the mouth, but do not set the hook when using circle hooks. This next one is very important. Once you put the hook through the bait, you need to make sure you clear the scales off the point of your hook. A scale on the tip of your hook will miss you the fish of your lifetime. That is a very important tip when using circle hooks. Another thing to remember, try if you're using standard straight circle hooks, try offset circle hooks. Offset circle hooks can have a better hookup ratio. I can't say they always do, but I feel like they have a better hookup ratio percentage than a standard um, octopus circle hook. Try an offset. Uh, they can also do the job and get you on some big fish. Another thing we need to talk about is putting the bait on your hook. And this is a very important thing when you're using circle hooks and cut bait. You want to be able to have some gap on your hook when you're hooking the bait. When you're putting the hook through your bait, you want to leave enough gap above the, the, bot, the top of the bait and the point of your hook. You don't want to always fill the bait with the hook. But there are times when the bite is really, really light and the bite is really, really tough when you need to fill the hook with bait. It's obviously not ideal, but there are times when you need to fill the hook with bait so you can get some metal in their mouth because sometimes they're just grabbing the edge of the bait, ripping the bait off, or uh, you're just missing fish in general. But do not fill the hook with the bait typically. Don't bury the hook too deep into the bait. We call it feather hooking. We do it for blue cats on the Missouri River. Um, when I caught my 118 pound blue cat, we're feather hooking baits. Not ultra light, but just under the spine where you got a really good gap above your circle hook. If you're buried 
the bait too deep on the hook, you can miss some fish, but there are times when the bite is light and you do want to put more bait on the hook. So they're getting a little bit of metal in their mouth. So hopefully you guys gathered some great information. If you did enjoy the video and you want to watch some more fishing videos in the future, please hit subscribe. And if you did learn something, please share the video to your friends or show it to someone that's just getting into catfishing and is not sure what to do. Um, even experienced cat fishermen um, can always learn something too. I'm always out here learning. So thank you guys so much and we will see you on the next episode. Fish on.